So welcome back to Stay Home and Draw. <laughs> Today we're going to be drawing pop art pizza. You see I've got my pizza over there <laughs> to kind of inspire you a little bit. Um, but the whole point of this is to, amidst this crazy pandemic we're all experiencing, um, for everybody to just stay home, first of all, and then to do something creative with that time you have at home and hopefully take your mind off of like all the craziness that's going that's going on right now and do fill your, your world with a little creativity. So that's what we're doing. And um, I'm gonna be just drawing and kind of explaining what I do as I'm drawing it. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to type them into the comments. My husband Jeff is here manning all the comments and questions, so he'll be shouting them out to me um, kind of as we go. So yeah, and um, I think we'll go ahead and get started then. Let's get started, absolutely. All right, so I'm gonna go into Procreate. And I'm going to create a new canvas. I'm gonna use uh, my preferred canvas size, which is 5,500 by 4,000 pixels, a horizontal canvas. And um, it's, it's probably overkill as far as pixels go, but I always like to have uh, a lot of a high resolution to work with because it allows me to crop down later if I need to. Um, okay, so we're gonna be drawing a slice of pizza and then uh, adding some kind of like fun, comic style pop art elements to it. So you guys will see as I, as I progress on this drawing. And the set I decided to use for this one is my copycat marker set. Um, it's supposed, it's an alcohol-based markers. I'm sure you guys are familiar with like Copic brand markers. If you uh, do like physical media with markers, you've probably heard of that brand. Um, so it's supposed to be similar to that medium. Um, so that's what I'm going to be using today. So if you have that set, follow along. If you don't, you can use other brushes um, to kind of make it your own or just draw whatever you want and listen and just hang out and ask questions like no expectations here at all. Uh, so I'm going to start actually with a sketch. With a sketch. Um, I'm going to go to my pencil box set and grab Bardo pencil. Um, but any, any pencil brush will work for a sketch. Uh, there's also the sketching set that Procreate gives you built in, so you can grab one of those too. Uh, but I'm gonna use pencil box, and I'm gonna grab like a middle gray. And then, this is kinda how, like pizza, drawing a piece of pizza, I think was one of the first things that I like learned how to draw and like drew everywhere. <laughs> so this is kinda how I draw my pieces of pizza. I make kind of like a curve thing and then that's like round to give it some dimension. And then the, you know, triangle piece, kind of make that a little, there we go. <laughs> what do I have for my eraser right now? I'll use the same brush, the pencil brush. Boop, boop. Okay, and then I like to make it a little bit 3D, so I just draw like that, like a little bit of 3D to give it some thickness. And then I kind of just connect that, like that'll end up, nah. <laughs> that'll end up looking like that, there we go. It's just a sketch, so it doesn't really matter how messy it is because again, it's, it's just a guide that I use as I progress on my drawing. And then I kind of do like a wavy line to denote like where the sauce uh, is at the like back of the pizza. And then I'm gonna do, I always do like a pepperoni pizza. That's kind of like my go-to as far as pizza drawings. So I'll just add some like round pepperoni to the pizza, kind of however I decide to do that. Maybe something like that. But if you're drawing along with me, like feel free to add whatever toppings you want to your pizza. I'm just gonna stick to pepperoni. I just wanna move this one a little bit. Well, you got mushrooms on the pizza next to you. <laughs> I, I bet this is like a toy. <laughs> it's my kid's like pizza toy. Um, I would have put all pepperoni if I had enough. <laughs> pepperoni pizza is probably my favorite pizza. Just like pepperoni, red sauce, super basic. Uh, and then like second or sometimes first is margarita pizza, which is just like mozzarella, basil, tomato. Hands down, like I will take either of those any day of the week. They're my fave. Um, okay, so there we go. We've got a sketch now, super simple. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start coloring this in. So we're progressing quickly. 
Um, so the first thing I do when I am ready to move on from sketching is I reduce the opacity of my sketch layer to about there, just so I can barely see it still. And then I set the blend mode to multiply. And then just this just makes it so um, it's always dark enough to see uh, when I'm drawing things underneath it. So I always keep my sketch layer on top. So I'm gonna move that to the top. I just added a new layer and then I moved my sketch to the top. So that'll always be on top until I'm ready to turn it off and not use it anymore. So, uh, as I mentioned, the set that I'm going to be using is my copycat marker set. And when you, when you get this set, it comes with three brush sets. One is the copycat marker set, and then there's a layering version of that, which um, means like when you build up strokes, they darken and intense in, they darken and set, they darken and increase saturation the more like strokes you put on top of each other. And then there's also this like texture tool set, which I'll be jumping into quite a bit. I use this a lot. So um, I'll explain more about what that is as we progress, but you can use whatever brushes you guys want for this. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start with the Bardo Copycat round brush. So it's the first one in the set. And I think I'm gonna start with like the bread part, the crust. So for that, I'm gonna get like a, I don't know, like an orangey beige color, beige, I don't know. And then I'm just gonna color this in. And I, when I'm using these brushes, I like to be very messy and loose and like get all these like blotchy, markery, markery <laughs> kind of textures as I'm drawing. So, that's why I'm not like trying to make it perfect or anything like that. I'm kind of just gonna build up. There we go. And I'll do the side as well. So that'll kind of go like that. And then, I'm just kind of like, this is just like coloring book style right now. I'm just kind of using my sketch as a guide and filling in the areas with color. And the, the way that these brushes work is they start out opaque and then you can build up to like the full um like what's the opposite no they start out transparent and they build up to opaque sorry if i got that backwards before so the more that you add strokes the darker and more filled in and opaque it will get while we're going on we've had a bunch of questions and just kind of chat about screen protectors do you need one must you have them is paper like the best one <clears throat> and um, I just wanted you to just... Yeah, I always get a lot of questions about screen protectors. I highly recommend um, a matte screen protector. My favorite is matte glass screen protector, mostly because they're easiest to install than the like flimsier paper one or plasticier one. <laughs> um, and I have a link to one that I use in my FAQ page at bardobrush.com slash FAQ. Um, but I don't think it wears your nib down any faster, especially the matte ones because it... It makes it more smooth as you draw, which I prefer. So it's a very smooth, fluid feel. Okay, so I've got like the bread, the side of it, like the crust part. So now I'm gonna work on the cheese. So I'm gonna put that on a new layer. And for the color, I'm gonna go over to the yellows and I'm gonna go like a really, really light yellow. I'm a, I know like pizza cheese is, is, is kind of whitish, but and we're gonna add some different tones and stuff to make it look like pizza. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna fill this in. Again, very loose and rough. Not perfect. And while you're going on, someone's just asking, you know, hey, do you have free brushes? Um, you know, what's, what is out there in the world of brushes when it comes to you, Lisa? Um, I do. I have, a, I have, I think like 12 different brush sets now. Um, and I don't have any free sets right now, but I, that's like in my future plans is to make some free sets to, to give out along with some like cool tutorials to go with them. So look out for that in the future. The best way to get notified that is of course by signing up for the email newsletter. So, so make sure you sign up for our newsletter. We do have a cool, are we going to announce it on Friday? I think we are, right? About what's going on for next week with with the stuff. With the, or are we going to announce it on Monday? 
Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, so. <laughs> the one I have planned for next, next month? month? Next month's topic. Oh, um, I'll probably talk about that tomorrow. Be okay. Yeah, so, but like with making art every day, and if you don't know what making art every day is, that is my um, like daily drawing challenge that I run, and I send out prompts for every day of the week. I send it out once a week. So on Sunday is when you get the new prompt. So we're, we're getting close to that and we're starting a new month and a new theme. This month we did the ABCs. We, we illustrated a letter of the alphabet and that was really fun. And people got to really pick whatever theme they wanted for that and infuse their personality into it. It was really cool. So um, I highly recommend joining that if you want to learn to draw better because it just gets you practicing daily and also trying a range of subject matter, maybe something you wouldn't have thought to draw, but it gives you good experience drawing that thing. So, um, so yeah, stay tuned for what next month is going to be. I'm super excited about the, the theme for next month. So, okay. Um, so I've got my cheese, I've got my crust. Now I'm going to add my pepperoni. So I'm going to create another new layer for that. So I'll just tap the plus sign there. And then pepperoni is kind of like dark red. So that's kind of the color I'm using for that. And then I'm just going to draw that in and fill it in. You can see these brushes, they start out kind of light, but the more you add strokes, the darker it gets. And right now, you could probably tell this looks like pretty soft, like overall. And I'm going to go in with like a finer tip brush and, and kind of make the, everything a little more sharp. So you'll see that in a minute. But right now, I'm just being kind of loose. Got one more over here and one more down at the bottom. Someone's asking a good question. Do you change your color profile whenever you make a new canvas? I usually just stick to the RGB color profile. Um, P3, I think is the one that like Procreate recommends. It's got the widest color gamut of any color profile. So you'll get the widest range of colors. Um, so no. Generally, I don't. I just stick with this, and I know when I print it, it's going to look a little different, so I don't really bother with changing it to CMYK um, unless I'm working on, like, maybe a client project or something like that, but most of my art's just for me and for you guys, so. <laughs> okay, so we've got uh, this pretty much done as far as, like, laying out the shapes and coloring in the parts. Um, at this point, I'm also going to add a background. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and I want to, I'm not going to use the background color. I know I've been using that a lot, um, but I want to draw in the background to give it that marker texture. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to drag it all the way to the bottom. And then I'm going to pick a color and I've been, I've been doing blue a lot lately, but I don't know. I'll do it again. <laughs> we'll do a different blue, not like the blue I've been using. Um, and then the brush that I'm gonna use to do the background is this one called Copycat Wide. And it's just like a really wide brush. And I'm gonna make um, just a very like loose texture. And, and real quick, which brush were you using before you changed for the-, the I was using Copycat Round, which is Copycat the top round. one. Mm -hmm. okay. So copycat round first, and then you just switched over to... To uh, copycat wide. Copycat wide. So this represents like a wide... Actually, hold on for one sec. What's awesome is she's <laughs> literally grabbing her markers, uh, because what's crazy is the amount of detail and effort that actually goes into <laughs> taking the tangible marker and then how do you transfer that into the digital world. So, yeah, so. a lot of research went into <laughs> what you guys are using, copycat markers. Yeah, so this is the brush. This is the, the, the marker that it's emulating. It's this like wide, super chiseled brush. So that's how you get those like wide strokes and it, and it gives you that texture. Um, and then, you know, these are Copic markers if you've never seen them before, but they usually have different nibs, like a fine point, and then the other side usually has a chisel tip, and then there's like brush nibs that you can switch them out with. Hold on. <laughs> 
How dare Lisa not I know. have all of this ready. I should have had this ready. I didn't think about it. Um, yeah, thankfully, in our, in our studio, in our office. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and this is where we have our, our workshop stuff, uh, and we get to yeah. play with all of this. And these are like brush nibs, so they get like a thick thin, depending on the pressure. So I have brushes like that all included in the set. So I did a lot of research and practice and trying to get it to look uh, as, as authentic as possible to the real deal. So, and the thing is, uh, one thing I, I also wanted to mention is I think, and if you work with this marker before, like Copic markers or alcohol markers, usually like you're trying to get it to look smooth as possible, like all the shading and everything like that. Um, but in digital, like we have plenty of ways to do that and make color look smooth and stuff like that. So what I try to do with like a marker style brush is to get it to look um, more like what you probably don't want it to look like when you're making markers. So you can see that it looks like a marker and there's all these different strokes that overlap um, because that's, that's what happens when you use markers is the more strokes you lay down, the darker it gets um, to a point. So that's kind of what I'm going for here and why I like all this kind of like messiness. But it's not going to look like this forever because I'm going to do something to add to it. So I'm just going to work on the background still because I want to show you what I would do next. So this is not too bad. Like it looks pretty cool. It's got like this kind of nice flow and you've got some stuff happening. But the real magic of these brushes is in the t texture tools set. Um... Uh, I think I'm going to do the smooth. So these will give you the texture that you would see if you use these markers in real life. So I'm using the same color. I'm using copycat texture light. There's a light and a dark version for each of the textures. So this is the smooth texture and I'm using the light version of that brush. I want to turn on alpha lock. That's important. Maybe I'll explain why in a second. And then when I draw over this, it's gonna, it's hard, it's a little hard to see, but it's adding, like the more you do it, the more strokes you lay on it, the more intense that it gets. But it adds this like really fine grain texture to the whole, um, everything that I've drawn, uh, which is very um, characteristic of drawing with these markers. You'll see this kind of like very particular grain um, and then you switch to the dark version and then you do it again. And, and, mer and doing those two together gives it this really cool texture that's very much looks like what you would see if you um, were to use it in real life. <laughs> Someone was just asking a great question. What's the difference between copycat markers and the multi-tonal markers? Um, multi-tonal markers are a whole nother beast and those are meant to look more like, like maybe like a Crayola style marker, but they've got some nuance to using them. And I probably will do another live on that, but check out the, um, watch this video and you can get a feel of what this does. Uh, and then I have a tutorial about how to use the multi-tonal markers, which will show you how they work. And I think that will really give you an idea of how different they are and differently they behave. You can just produce a whole different style of art with them. Um, so, and I'll, pro I'll try to do a live. I wanna do a live on that eventually because I think they're really cool, but they do take a little bit of a learning curve. I'm just kind of filling in some areas that I think could be a little darker. Yeah, while you're doing that, someone's just asking, how are you inspired to do arts? I mean, that's mm -hmm. always a tough question. But that is a tough yeah. question. It's just, I don't know. It's different answer for every person. Um, it's, I don't know. <laughs> As being doing creative things is just so much a part of who I am and it's been that way my entire life. Like I, I think I said yesterday, like if I'm not doing creative stuff, I don't really know who I am <laughs> for better or for worse. Um, so yeah, but I, I, I don't know. I, I, other people really inspire me. And like the, the art that other people creates also like really inspires me a lot. It's why I love, um, the city more than nature. I kind of talked about that yesterday a little bit. Um, like I love things that people make and things that people create and getting in people's minds and understanding that. So, um, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard. Everybody has a different reason. I just, I'm just super drawn to it. I love starting with nothing and then it's something like you start with a white 
piece of paper, canvas, whatever, and then you work at it for a while and then it's a thing. And that's just magical to me. Like I also love sewing and woodworking for the same reason. Like you just start with all these raw materials and then you work at it for a long time and you make a plan and you solve problems. And then at the end, it's a thing, it's a different thing, like a whole different thing that didn't exist before. And that's just like amazing to me, so. Yeah. And then I'm the exact opposite of Lisa, where <laughs> nature is what it's yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> outside and you know, what that feeling does for me. And so that's kind of the beauty of art and all of these different things is that we get to find a way to be ourselves in it all. Yeah. Yeah, and every it's different for everybody. It's good yeah. for you to identify what inspires you. And it, it changes. It will change over time. Um, but it's always good to have that understanding of yourself as you're making art. So, Okay, so I think I'm good on the background for now. I really like kind of the texture that's happening. It's got a lot of movement. Um, and then it's got this cool, like, grain texture that I added. So now I'm going to work on, like, adding more detail to the actual pizza. So I'm going to start with the little pepperonis. Uh, I'm gonna select that layer. I'm gonna select that same color just by using the eyedropper, which is just holding down, and you can choose whatever color you want. So that's what I'm doing. And then I'm going over back to the copycat markers set, and I'm gonna choose the standard fine brush. So that's something like, like no, that's not it. Wait, that was it. Not a very good color, but it's like a, a finer point nib. And I'm gonna use that to kind of define these edges a little bit more so they aren't so soft. And then kind of just fill them in a little bit more. So I'm just going around. I'll probably erase some of that, which for my eraser, um, I'm gonna use the round heavy brush, which is like the more opaque version of the round brush. So it's like, you don't have to build up all the layers to get the maximum opaqueness. So it's great as an eraser. So there we go, that's easy. And then maybe I'll just draw that in and then kind of blend that edge a little bit. I still want it to look kind of, you know, have all these different like levels of opacity to the pepperoni. And I'll do this guy here, kind of blend it in. I'm just doing short little strokes to kind of blend that, you know, sharper line in here. I'll erase, oops, not too much, just, just a little bit. And again, I'm just using this to define the edges of my pepperoni. Okay, so now they look a little bit more graphic and less soft. So I'm gonna do the same thing for like the cheese layer. So I'm gonna select that same cheese layer. I could probably turn my sketch off right now. Yeah, I'm gonna turn the sketch off. It's always good to remember to turn your sketch off because it can skew the way that you view your artwork when you think something's, oh, that looks good. That looks like sharp enough, that line. But then it's pro it might be because you had the sketch <laughs> turned on and now you turn it off and like everything looks way softer so all right as you're doing this you know your hand hits and we had, had someone's asking a question what happens if you put your hand down on the screen while you're drawing oh my hand is always down on the screen while drawing and if, if that causes problems for you um you might have to adjust your preferences so that's in the actions menu preferences um i think it's under gesture controls uh, I don't, I haven't edited it, but there is a setting so that you can, it can like ignore your hand, but it usually, if you're using an Apple Pencil, it usually doesn't happen because it's kind of built to ignore your palm while you draw with your pencil. Yeah, so Procreate it and in coordination with the Apple Pencil is really why, um, yeah. why it works so well in Procreate. Yeah, the Apple Pencil is just the best. I know if you can't afford it, um, I would highly recommend investing in that as a companion to your iPad and Procreate. It's gonna make a world of difference um, in your drawing. It's like the other, I've, I haven't used a, a third party stylus in probably years now, but um, yeah, I just know the Apple Pencil is the best and 
that's what it, it is the best only because it's, it's all integration apple yeah. is just amazing at this stuff and then the guys at procreate developing the software you know it's just this whole combination of magic basically uh, someone's asking how is baby bardot doing <laughs> uh for those of you that don't know i am pregnant right now uh what like 34 weeks 33? No, 33. 33. 33. I'm not getting ahead of myself. Get up there. <laughs> um, so I've got like a month and a half-ish to go. <laughs> um, he's doing good. It's a boy. Um, just kicking around, swimming around, doing well. So we'll get to meet him later. <laughs> Look at all this crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, it's going to be interesting having a baby in this situation that we're in right now. So... Someone, someone was just asking, do you keep a list of drawing ideas somewhere or do you just raw write these things come to you? No, I definitely do. I have a, um, I use an app called Evernote to just keep notes and stuff for myself. And I have a little notebook in that app called um, Things to Art. <laughs> things to Art. And whenever I have an idea, I write, I write it down there and I, you know, I can't always act on every single idea um, right away. So I'll write that down. But a lot of times I start and I don't have any ideas and then I just go and sometimes I'll go to Pinterest and I'll see like a picture of a gorilla and I'll be like, oh, I want to draw a gorilla um, and then I'll draw a gorilla <laughs> or whatever it is, you know, um, sometimes Instagram. I also like save a lot of things, you know, how you can do the little bookmark in Instagram that inspire me. Um, so I'll do that a lot too. But I have some cool tools like uh, I don't know what to draw dot com, which will do like a random idea generator. I'll show you that right now because it's oh, see, I was looking at pictures of pizzas earlier. Um, yeah, don't. a lot of research actually goes into this, guys. It's uh, <laughs> it's not just sit down and draw a pizza. You know, yeah, I can cool. draw I can draw a cartoon pizza pretty easy, you but can, like you can, getting yeah. the nuances of like how the cheese looks and when it gets a little burnt and stuff, you know, that's what reference photos are for. Um, so what should I draw dot com or I don't know what to draw dot com. We'll go to this page and it'll give you like a random idea where it puts like a verb and an adjective and a noun together in like a crazy sentence. So you should draw an unlikely festival that is doing some forcing. <laughs> Sometimes they don't make sense, but it does give you like a simpler idea. And then there's a color palette that you can just like use in Procreate. You can download that to Procreate. Um, I'll do one more really quick. If, uh. My internet's being good. You should draw a dazzling path that is doing some evading <laughs> or a can of spam. <laughs> um, one more. Like I said, sometimes they don't make sense. You should draw an eerie mom that is doing too much questioning. That I can visualize pretty easily. <laughs> or draw a pine tree. Uh, and you can submit words to, to this generator as well. Um, so that's kind of fun. And then, of course, making art every day is just good because it gives you an idea every day and you don't have to think about it. Okay, so I've kind of defined the shapes a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and like start adding some shading because it's still looking pretty flat. So I'm going to start with the crest. I'm going to turn on alpha lock at this point because I'm not going to be adding more shape, you know, to what I've already drawn. I just want to shade what I've already drawn. So alpha lock is going to be really handy for that. So I'm gonna select that same color, which was the crust color. And then I'm gonna go into my tools. And this is where the tools are really cool, like the light and the dark, because um, I can just use these to shade really easily. So for example, I'm gonna grab the smooth, uh, smooth texture dark, and I'll make it a little bit smaller and probably a little bit more saturated. A little bit smaller and I can just use that to like shade in you know like where the pizza looks a little more cooked towards the t towards the, like the roundish part and just shade in like that and um, I could do it a little bit more down here I'll probably add some like orange or something because it's like that's where the sauce would be and then I can take the light version here I get a little bit lighter color and this is really just lightening and adding texture at the same time, which is pretty cool. So I'm, the side of the pizza would be like much lighter because um, it's the part that was cut and not cooked. And I'm still staying pretty soft with my shading for now, but 
let me see i'm gonna grab that same color i'm gonna go to the dark and i kind of just i'm like going back and forth between the light and the dark there we go that's kind of what i wanted so that part is like getting nice and dark and it's getting this like nice texture added to it i'm gonna go a little more orange and a little more saturated just so I can get a little more color happening there. Which brush are you on right now? Um, I've been going back and forth between the Smooth Copycat Texture Light and Smooth Copycat Dex Texture Dark. So anytime I use the dark brush, it's gonna darken. And anytime I use the light brush, it's gonna lighten. So those are kind of how those are meant to be. Um, and then I can even use, let me see, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna get like an orangey red, not too dark. I think I'll try the dark brush and just kind of make this. No, I think that's gonna be too dark. I'm gonna do that a different way. Scratch that. Uh, I'm gonna go to, let's just go back to Copycat Round real quick. So that's in the Copycat Marker Set, Copycat Round, because I wanna make this part look more like orangey, like what that's where the sauce would be, because I forgot to do that. So. As you're, as you're doing that, someone's just asking, have you ever made a piece of art that you thought was bad and just not post the video? Um, yeah. Well, I don't know about posting the video, so if you, like... Also, just, like, I mean, talk about, like, pieces... I mean, the reality is, is, is you guys... Yeah, you don't I... don't share everything. Everything's Yeah, I don't, I don't share everything, and I do, I do definitely share works in progress that maybe didn't pan out. Um, like, I share a lot of that stuff in my stories, um, maybe not in my feed so much, but sometimes, but it's like, yeah, I make bad, bad art <laughs> all the time. Um, stuff, I draw stuff and it just doesn't work out the way I want. And I learn something from that. And that's what it's all about. Like, you're not going to produce ama like amazing pieces constantly all the time. It's a learning process. So, and you can still share and talk about what didn't work. Like I learned this and People love hearing that kind of stuff. If you know, if you're you're in it to see what people think of your art, like people love hearing your behind the scenes and your thought processes and like when things don't work out and what you thought happened and um yeah, share. Don't be embarrassed like especially if you're still learning, like how cool is it going to be if you're still if you're just starting out right now and you're not super proud of your work, but you start sharing it anyways and then you do that for a year or two. And then you go back and look at where you started and like how amazing to have that documentation of where you began. Um, I think that's really awesome. So share, share, share. Um, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the crust for now. It's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm going to move on to my cheese. So I'm going to go to the cheese. I'm going to turn on alpha lock. Uh, real quick, can you just show me how to do split screen um, one more time? So that way someone can see up like if they wanted to have two things up on their screen at one time. Yeah, this is actually a good... Say watching this live. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, right now. Good point. Uh, how do we do that on an iPad? So it's hard to see right now, but there's this line at the bottom of your screen, and you kind of pull that up, but not too far, because then you'll get into this, like, other mode like that. <clears throat> and then you take Safari or whatever app you're trying to do in split screen. Let me try again. Hold on. I held it too long. Okay, you grab it until it, like goes boop and then <laughs> and then you pull it over to the side and then you can have it there so that's how I do that and you and you can adjust it with a little like by grabbing it in the middle so this is great for doing reference photos or if you want to have the live up on one side and drawing on the other that's really great uh, I don't need you to I'm not gonna buy pizza I want you to look at pictures of pizza hope that helped Jane uh, Alva from Sweden right now was just asking if you've eaten waffles today. Uh, and why he asked, I guess it's, uh, it's uh, waffle day. Uh, oh right man, now. what is it like national waffle uh, day? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, well, at least in Sweden, it sounds like, oh. um, I will say though that last week, um, Lisa did happen to draw waffles. So I drew you, waffles yeah, last week. Yeah. yeah. So if you I haven't eaten waffles it, in Alva a bit. Or anyone else, um, waffles are kind of a special treat. Uh, we we don't have them super often in our house. We do eat a lot of pancakes and French toast, but I think waffles like you got to get the waffle iron out, <laughs> and that extra step is sometimes just too much. So, <laughs> well, it's too much for me. Um, yeah, Lisa may not do much cooking. I like in waffles. Our house. Um, good to know. Uh, okay, so now I'm gonna add some shading to the 
pizza. I'm gonna go back to my copycat textures tools. Um, I'm gonna probably start with a dark brush and I'm gonna start with this color, but probably gonna make it a little darker. And just add, I'm just gonna add some overall texture just to start. And I'm not going for super realistic here. I think that's important to say, but I want little hints of realism. So like the pizza, like the cheese gets kind of bubbly and parts of it turn orangey brown and stuff like that. So I'm gonna try and communicate a little of that here, not too much, um, just a hint of it. Because I think, yeah, I can get just like a little bit of variation in this kind of cheese texture so it looks kind of like cooked, you know. So this is that, the um, Copycat Texture Dark. And you can see I don't have like a really dark t color selected, but this brush will just continually dark, 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 as long as you um, add strokes to it. So that's how that works. And that was actually not looking too bad. Um, just adding some little dark bits, maybe here near the edge as well, maybe down here. And then I'm gonna get an even maybe redder, darker version, go a little smaller, just add a little bit in the middle. So I'm just kind of like adding those like darker cooked kind of parts. Um, and then I'm gonna try going in with the light brush as well. Let me get like a lighter color. I don't know if that's really gonna do anything useful. Probably not, it's already pretty light as it is. But yeah, just like that little bit that makes it look a little bit more realistic, a little bit more cooked. Um, I, I mentioned at the beginning, this is a pop art pizza. We haven't gotten to the pop art part yet. <laughs> so we're kind of just like laying down our foundation and then we're gonna jazz it up with some like fun kind of pop art elements. So, um, okay, I think the cheese looks pretty good. I'm gonna move on to the pepperoni now. So I'm gonna go to the pepperoni. Again, I'm gonna turn on alpha lock and I haven't really mentioned why I'm doing that, but if you haven't guessed already, it's because I'm um, using those texture brushes just to like draw over there and I don't wanna add anything to the shape. Like when I use alpha lock, I can only draw within the confines of the shape I've already drawn. So that makes it really easy to add shading without like messing up the edges of your drawing. Um, okay, so let's get this one color. I'm just gonna start with that color. The cool thing about these light and dark brushes is you can start with the same color that you used for the shape um, and it'll just make a lighter and darker version of that color as you use it. So there's the light version. So I'm just gonna add, I'm gonna start by adding just a little bit of texture to all these so they don't look so flat. I hope you guys can see that kind of happening. So there's a little bit of that grainy texture. Then I'm gonna switch over to the dark version of the same brush. So um, texture dark, and then I'm gonna add some dark. I'm gonna make the brush bigger. There we go. Just some little bit of dark. So the light and the dark really mix together and make like a cool like multi-tonal texture. And then I think I'm gonna add some darkness to the edges of the pepperoni, kind of like this. So I'm still using that dark brush. I haven't even changed my color from the original, you know, color I sampled. Make it a little smaller, and I'm just gonna like darken the edges of it a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks really good. There you go. Uh, cool, so that looks pretty good. I, I mean, overall, it's looking really awesome. Um, I think this little, chi uh, what is this, the saucy part needs a little more texture, so I'm gonna go to that layer, which was the one with the crust. It's still on alpha lock. Uh, I'm gonna select that layer. I'll use, or sorry, I'm gonna select that color. I'm gonna use that same color, I think, and just add a bit of texture to that. With This is the dark brush. And then I'm gonna go to the light brush as well. So kind of going back and forth. And I might go a little orangey on that. If you adjust the color, you like I said, you can choose the same color, but if you adjust the color, it's gonna infuse some of those different colored tones into the light, lightening and darkening, so. Okay, so now I've got the whole thing. It's all pretty well textured. 
Um, and I think I'm ready to do like the pop art part of this. So let's get started on that. This is where it can get really fun. Like this is, st this is a great drawing already as it is. Um, I, if I was not going to do the pop art thing, I might add some like line work to kind of give it a little more definition here. Um, I could add some shading. Actually, I will do that. I'm going to add a little bit of shading like right under the pepperoni. As you're, as you're adding layers real quick, what, talk about canvas size that would be good for someone who's just asking for smaller than yours. You know, as we're, as we're adding um, layers. Like three, layers. like if you want to print it, if you intend to print it at some point, I would probably stick to around 3,000 pixels um, on one side, like, you know, either that side or that side. Um, yeah, and if you're gonna only, use, I, like I usually don't recommend like going so small because I'm only gonna post it on Instagram um, because you might change your mind. You might change your mind and you can always shrink something down, but when you blow it up, it's gonna get all pixelated and stuff. So um, 3,000 pixels will probably do you pretty well. And you could print it like eight by 10 at least. Um, there's calculators that tell you exactly how many pixels you need to print at certain sizes, but um Okay, what was I doing? I was gonna add a little bit. So I'm going back to Copycat Round Brush. It's like the semi-opaque, sort of, um, sort of, yeah, semi-opaque. I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. <laughs> semi-opaque version of that brush. And I'm gonna get like a dark yellowy color because I'm just gonna add, actually I'm gonna turn off Alpha Lock now because I don't need it on. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of something around the edges of the pizza, or sorry, the pepperoni. And you don't need to do this. I just, I'm, I'm just experimenting and seeing if I like the way it looks, just to give it a little, little pop. See, it makes the pepperoni pop just a little bit more. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna do the actual pop thing that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to this layer with the pepperoni. I'm gonna tap plus so I can create a layer above all the other layers. Um, and then I'm gonna get black. And I'm gonna get my standard fine brush. And basically I'm gonna go through and add some like comic style outlining. So like black outlines to all the edges to make it look kind of like comic-y. Um, so let's start with that. Maybe I'll do one here. And then this is gonna go all the way down like that. And this is completely like a stylistic choice if you wanna explore this style of art. I'm just, I'm very quiet because I'm trying to be really careful, get my lines nice and straight, or as straight as possible. I don't ever like strive for like perfectly computer straight lines because then it won't look hand drawn. And I like my stuff to look like somebody actually used their hands to draw it. There are computers to draw the other way. <laughs> but I think Procreate shines because it shows that hand drawn element. So I was just asking, uh, hey Lisa, how do you manage your time being a mother? a wife, uh, and your art? Uh, yeah, people, <laughs> <laughs> people ask me that a lot. Um, <clears throat> childcare is number one. Uh, I've, I've mentioned this a couple times in these videos, but like having childcare is super important because I, I'm not, I'm a work at home mom. <laughs> I'm not a stay at home mom. Uh, I'm with my kids and I see them all day long and I pop in and give hugs and like help out a little bit. Um, but like Jeff's mom is like our primary like care caregiver. Caregiver. Yeah, she's grandma. Yeah, she's grandma. She, grandma. she she watches them like a few days a week. Right now she watches them five days a week. <laughs> Just less time per day because we kind of switch things up with everything that's going on. But um yeah, that's been like I could like we couldn't do any of this if we didn't have help with our kids. And we we're very fortunate that amidst all the pandemic stuff, like we still have that because she's 
isolated. She lives alone. She doesn't go anywhere. Jeff grocery shops for her. So it's it's all still good. So the crazy thing, I mean, she she is even an at-risk person. Lisa is pregnant as an at-risk person. So we take a lot of precautions to take care of ourselves as a family, but yet we're we do this because we do this together. Like even what we're doing right now takes two of us. Yeah, Jeff and I have been working together our entire relationship. And this is <laughs> a unique thing to our relationship. We met working for Apple. We worked together there. Um, we started a photography business together like 11 years ago. We did that together. You know, that's still we still do that a little bit. Um, and now we're doing this together. So <laughs> it's just works for us. Wouldn't work for everybody for sure. But um, yeah. And then just also utilizing the time I have in the evening. Like after we put the kids to bed, we usually work until midnight. So... <laughs> We do work a lot. I'm trying to work on not working so much, but um, I just, it's what I like to do. So yeah, yeah there you go. Okay, <laughs> so uh, so I've done like all the outlines and now I'm gonna have some fun and add, or actually I haven't done the pepperoni outline, so I'll do that. But I wanna add some more different kind of line elements to make it more fun and designy. I don't know what the correct word I would use for that. Add some more style to it. So I'm just outlining, there we go. Okay, so, and this is like your choice. You can choose how to depict it any way you want, but I'm gonna add these like lines that kind of go back and forth. They give um, some dimension to it. They show that it's round and then it's just like kind of fun and interesting. Kind of messed up right here. There we go. Um, so this is like totally like a stylistic choice however you wanna do this. So if you're following along, I would recommend adding some like fun lines, whatever you feel like doing. Um, and I think that's all the black lines that I'm gonna do. Um, I like where this black line is, but I don't like how some of the, like what is that called? The cheese is like showing. Um, and I could go back and like redraw and add that in and redo it, but I'm gonna do it something else. I'm gonna use liquify. That's what I use to like make little adjustments if I need to. So I'm gonna turn off alpha lock on the layer with the crust and the sauce because alpha lock, or sorry, liquify doesn't work if you're using alpha lock. So now I'm going to the adjustments menu, liquify. And I'm using the push, um, you know, whatever, the push one. <laughs> Uh, make the brush size a little smaller. Okay, so now I see what the real problem is actually is that the cheese is the layer that I need to be moving around that because that didn't do anything. That's fine, you learned something. Um, so I'm gonna go to, to the cheese layer, go to liquify and move that a little bit. There we go. That's what I want. And sometimes you don't want the like line work to uh, align perfectly with the edge of your like coloring and you could do something like that, which also is another style, which looks kind of cool. That's like an option that you could do. It's kind of like that whole like off register print kind of thing. But for me, I'm not gonna do that. I do wanna add, I think we need like that. one more of those. Okay. Okay, so, so someone was just asking, I mean, as we're doing all of this line work. Yeah. Uh, just wondering why you don't draw the lines first and then do the coloring beneath them after that. Um, I could do it that way. Um, probably not a reason other than like I like to work on the shading and like all that without having the lines there um and then add the lines as like an extra element at the end. It's kind of more fun for me to do it that way too. So and then when you really think about it, though, with the process, we did start with the lines. Uh, is yeah. Exactly what if, would you start with? If I was, uh, yeah, I did. I mean, because I did the sketch. You did the sketch. And so. if this were a painting, you know, this is kind of how it would go too, where you draw, you know, you do those lines last. Um, so it's totally personal preference. Like you could draw an outline and then like color it in. That's totally a way that you could do it too. There's no like right or wrong way to do it. So. That's a good question. Okay, so the the last thing I want to do is add some more kind of fun line stuff to it. Um, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to create a layer below the black lines, above the other layers. And I'm going to add some cool lines to the pepperoni. Now, 
I'm gonna use a blend mode to do this and hopefully I can show you why. So I'm using the same brush I did for all the other lines, which is the standard fine. Um, so I, I pulled that color in and it's the same color, so you can't really see it if I draw. Da, 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 da. And I could choose a darker color, but there's so many variations in the color of this pepperoni. I just want it to like always have the same darkness. This is difficult to explain, but let me, I'm gonna turn on the multiply blend mode. So I'm tapping the N, going to multiply. I'm gonna select that same color, like something like that. Uh, maybe a little bit darker. And now no matter where I draw this line, sorry, I gotta get the right darkness. It will always darken whatever's underneath it. And it will also like show the texture of the layer underneath it too. Cause it's pretty, like when you use a blend mode, it's basically making um, that layer transparent and interacting with the layers below it in a particular way. So Multiply makes all the light pixels <laughs> transparent, completely transparent, and all the dark pixels you would still see. So if I didn't have this, um, let me see. I, hopefully this is easy for you to see. So if I didn't have this, obviously it's like too light, too light to see. And if I made it just darker, like it wouldn't be picking up the texture as much underneath it. I hope this is making sense. In my head, it makes sense. So that picks up the texture underneath it and also darkens whatever I'm drawing on. So I use the multiply blend mode. I know I, I used it for the sketch. I also use it to like add shadows when I wanna darken everything underneath that shadow in the same way and not have to like pick the exact right um, color to darken it to and repaint it. And I'll have to do another one with um, adding a shadow to something because I think that would be really cool to see using blend modes to add shadows. So I'm just adding these fun little marks to kind of, these are just totally, again, personal preference, stylistic choice. I think they look kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, so there's that. I definitely give it that awesome. Yeah, it, it makes it more of that kind of pop art. Like if it was a comic, they'd be like little circles, um, but I'm doing it kind of my own version of what I interpret pop art to be. Um, and so now I'm gonna add some stuff to the uh, crust and maybe the sauce. Maybe for the sauce I'll do, I'll just do that now. I'm gonna get like an orange and do the same thing. Just some little marks like that. But you could do these as dots, you could do these as little lines, little diagonal lines, like a fun pattern, like you just could have fun with it. Um, okay, so for the bread, like for the crust, um, I don't want it to darken. I want to add lines that are lighter than what I've already done. That's what I decided I want to do. So I'm going to create another new layer. And this time, instead of the multiply blend mode, I'm going to choose screen. And those are probably like the most commonly used to like lighten or darken something. And there are other reasons you would use the other ones. But um, screen generally does the opposite of what multiply does is where it takes all the Whatever pixels are white, it lightens whatever's underneath it. And if there's any pixels, pixels that are black, it makes those completely transparent. <laughs> it's a very abstract concept to wrap your brain around. Uh, trust me, I understand that. Um, but that's what it does. So I'm grabbing kind of like this beigey color. We'll see how light this looks. And I'm just going to, so I think that's like way too light. So I'm going to get something a little bit darker. That's a little good. And kind of just add these like little lines just to kind of give it a little extra something. I could do it, I could do it in the same way where I do like little hash mark lines, but I'm just doing them as lines and this is a stylistic choice again. So that's why I'm choosing to do it that way just because I think I like the way it looks. And you can see like on top of this line isn't solid. You can see some of the like variation in the um, tones of the layer beneath it. And that's what the screen mode, blend mode will do, is it'll let you see some of those tones. So 
by the time I do all these live videos, try and explain blend modes, I'm gonna be able to make a really good blend mode tutorial. <laughs> like I'll have the language to do it. Um, and then let's do something similar here. Here it's a little hard to see them. So I'm gonna choose an even lighter color. And I think I'm gonna do actually here. Now, you know what? I think I'm gonna do darker. I'm gonna go back to the one that I use for multiply because I wanna do little dots that are darker. So that same color I was using to do light, I'm now using to choosing to do dark because it's it will darken. That's what multiply will do. If you are totally confused, let me know. <laughs> or if you have any questions, pop them into the little comment box and Jeff will shout them out at me. So I'm just, this time I'm doing little dots because kind of because like pizza and bread and stuff like has little bubbles in it. So that's why I thought dots would be good for the side of this. Kind of trying to make them random. And uh, someone's just saying, I just got the Apple Pencil and Procreate and I'm confused. Uh, I just want to say, just because I saw one person chime in and it was really awesome, the key is knowing how to use the tools and yeah. not really about drawing. Yeah, yeah you got like, drawing is one I'm skill. Lost, uh, okay, yeah. we're getting back on Insta, guys. One sec. Okay, we're back on Instagram. Hopefully, Instagram, you guys can join us again. There's an hour time limit. I'm trying to make these videos shorter for you guys because <laughs> I know they can be kind of long, but we're almost done anyways. So um, uh, we were talking about uh, the skill of using your tools and then the skill of drawing, and those are two completely different tool, uh, completely different skill sets. Um, you can know how to draw really well on paper, uh, but then you open up Procreate and you're like, uh, I don't know how to use this. And like, you can flounder. And that's totally a possibility. Like, you need to, one, learn how, know how to use your tools. And two, you need to know how to draw. So those are two different things. And um, I would definitely recommend, you can do them simultaneously, absolutely. But I recommend some tutorials, like, to help you get to know the software. I have a really good one called Intro to Procreate. Um, which goes over all the like basics, um, every everything that's important for you to know to get you familiar with the software and get you drawing. And then um, I just did a workshop last Friday called uh, Making Art on the iPad. And that's another kind of intro style course um, where we're doing like a drawing and following along and learning a bunch of cool stuff. So, um, so there's that as well. But there's plenty if you go to Skillshare and YouTube and like just watch a lot of tutorials and just draw more. And the more you draw and learn, like, what does this tool do? And you try it. And they're like, oh, that's what that does. <laughs> and then you learn. Um, so that's another great way to learn. So, um, okay, so I've got the pizza. I think I'm good on the pizza. I don't know if I really want to add anything to the cheese. I think I'm going to leave that as is and just leave it as it is. Um, but I do want to maybe add something to the background. And I have an idea of what I want to do, but um, maybe I'll give you guys some ideas. I'm going to go to that layer. I'm going to create a layer right above it, below all the pizza layers. Um, so a couple of things you could do is just grab, Procreate has some built-in texture brushes. I haven't tried this yet, so I'm going to just see if I like it. Like this one, Myrtle. Um, I'm going to do, I'll do the multiply blend mode for this and I'll select the same blue color. So now I'm adding like a darker version of this texture. And I don't know if this is gonna, if I'm gonna like the way it looks, but that's an idea. Like you can just grab a brush that has a texture and paint that texture in. I think the scale of this for me is a little too small. I want something more like bold and graphic. So, and, and, and this actually goes along with something that someone make it bigger. just said. They're like, how do you keep going with digital art when you're a beginner and you're a perfectionist? No, oh, I'm a perfectionist. You just, uh, you got to embrace that it's not going to be good at the beginning. If you're just learning, it's not going to be what your idea of good might be. But also understand that your idea of good is going to change and increase as you become an artist. So you will probably never reach your idea of good because your taste um, of what is good grows along with your skill. <laughs> and that sounds like a negative thing, but it's not. 
Um, just keep making stuff. You don't have to share anything if you don't want to. Just keep making stuff and when you're comfortable, share. But again, like sharing isn't scary. Nobody's here to judge you. Like people are wrapped up in their own world <laughs> doing their own thing and they like you do you and you just keep going with it and keep practicing because that is how you're going to get better. Um, there's one called newsprint I could try which is kind of cool, like if you wanted to get like a kind of comic-y look. But um, yeah, I have some also texture brushes myself. So like uh, Texture Maker, where is it? Texture Maker has some cool ones, like this polka dot paper. Um, that's in my Texture Maker set. So that's kind of cool and like really easy. My brushes go a lot bigger than like the Procreate one, so it's like easier to fill in an area. Oh, so that's kind of cool. Like it's um, it's got kind of that like comic book look to it. And I might just need to like erase some of the middle part here. Oh, that's kind of that's great. I like that. Um, and then one other thing, I'm gonna just turn that one off because I want to show you one other way that I was playing around with to like add something interesting to the background. Um, so I'm gonna go to my copycat markers again and choose that wide brush, and that's the one that I use to make the background in the first place. Um, I'm gonna turn that to, maybe we'll try screen. So that's gonna add, a, it's gonna lighten whatever I put on, it's gonna be lighter. And like, I could do like diagonal lines really easily that way. I could do also like plaid kind of a situation happening this way. Because this brush is like a little bit transparent. Every time I add a stroke, it gets darker. So wherever it went over a stroke I already drew, um, it gets a little bit darker. So that's another thing that you can do. Um, just play around with like different patterns and things for the background and you'll come up with something that you like. I kind of like this one. That's really fun. Maybe I'll try. So I have multiply turned on. I'm gonna change it to screen. You can scroll through and see what the different blend modes do. Darken's not too bad. Color burn can be kind of intense. So that's with screen, but like the same color, but with screen turned on, and that will make it like lighter. So that kind of looks cool too. So it's whatever your preference is. Play around and see what kind of stuff you can do. Um, I think I'm gonna call it a day on this illustration. I'm pretty happy with it. So um, if we have any questions, we can take a few questions and also, uh, I wanted you guys to to put some shout out in there, like what kind of stuff you want to see me draw in these live videos. I would love to hear from you because I run out of ideas, you know, like I'm human. So um, I would love to hear from you and see what you guys want to see. But we could take a yeah. few questions. And, and like a great place to do that, message us on Instagram. Uh, yeah. You can message Bardo Brush. You can message Lisa. That's a great place to to send those as well. Yeah. Or um, a, a couple people were uh, just asking, well, actually, a great one because where you just were. What's the difference between uh, copycat markers and copycat layering brush? Here, here. I'll show you. Let me get open up a new canvas. If Procreate will let me. Okay, so the layering brushes. Um, went, so you can see that right away. Let me do, actually, let me start with the other ones and I'll show you. So the regular copycat markers, they start out opaque and then they build up to... Like once you build up enough strokes, they don't, they're not gonna get any more, I'm sorry, I keep using the word opaque wrong. They start out semi-opaque, so, and then you build it up until they get completely opaque. So now this is like the full darkness, uh, you know, that I can get to with that brush. Um, the layering brushes, the more you build up strokes, it will just keep getting darker and darker and darker and darker and darker and darker and darker, 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 darker until it's like really dark. So that's the difference there. So sometimes you want that because there are, like when you use markers, sometimes they do that more. Um, you'll see that more apparent like with certain colors and things like that. Or if you want it, like this looks kind of cool as just like a way to shade something. So maybe you want that kind of a, an effect to what you're drawing. But I include both sets so that you can have the option. Like this is a lot easier to control in my opinion, um, but this can look really cool if you like use it in the right way. So, um, so that's the difference between those two. Yeah. So on uh, Instagram was just asking, do you have a video that teaches shading and shadows? Do I have a video? Um, on, in the same vein as what we've been doing today, 
Um, I have a video in my tutorials page. So here you can, if you go to my website, bardobrush.com and you go to tutorials, you'll see all the tutorials I've ever made. And I have one for copycat markers um, where we did a donut. And I show you some tips about shading in, in that video. So we you know, did some shading and highlights and stuff to make the donut look a little more realistic. Um, it's not like I don't have a video that's just all about shading, but I try to incorporate it into different videos you know, as I, as I create them. So well, that's a good one to check out. Someone was just saying the fig tree video is good for shadows. Mm, yeah. So the alpha. There's, there's so many ways that you could approach shading and shadows and um, and different things like that. Like you can go, you can stylize it, you can make it realistic and um, it can be soft, it can be like hard shadow. Like there's so many different ways that you could do it. So I kind of just like whatever drawing I'm working on and whatever style I'm doing it in, I try to show that. So, but I think it would be cool to have a, a shading video that's just like all about how to think about shading. Um, yeah, that would be cool to do maybe one day. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of cool ideas from you guys from these things. And then someone had a question for yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, but the, the video did uh, abruptly end because we, oh, uh, yeah. we, our internet, our internet like crapped us. out. <laughs> uh, we do have good internet normally, but you know, it happens. So sorry about yesterday and it crapping out there at the end. But the question was, can you show us how to add magic paper to a canvas after mm. drawing? Somebody did ask that yesterday and we were going to come back to it, but yeah, we had internet problems. Yes, so um, a couple different ways. If you don't know what we're talking about, because we did, we did a video using one of my products, Magic Paper, yesterday. You can check that out. I also have a Magic Paper tutorial on my tutorials page that will tell you all about what it is, um, but it's really awesome. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and open up one of my Procreate files. Um, how about this one? It's called Watercolor Wonder. Makes things kind of look watercolory. Um, so there's a couple ways that you can do it. So I open up that file. I've got it ready to go, ready to put my art into. And let's pick, I'll do this one that um, we did as, as in the Procreate class last Friday. So this is what we drew. Um, so there's a couple different ways. The easiest one, if you don't need to make any edits to your image, is to go to basically share and then just save it as a JPEG or PNG and save it to your camera roll. And then open up the canvas that you, whoops, go away. So open up the magic paper canvas and import that photo. So I'm gonna go to that, import that, and there we go, there it is. And you might need to crop the canvas a little bit. So you can see this is a good one because now you can see like what a difference, like adding that texture, it just adds that extra like element to it that makes it look really like cool and have all this watercolor texture um, without doing any work. So, <laughs> um, so if I didn't need to edit uh, this at all, uh, I can just do that and import like it as a flat image. If the colors start looking a little off, like, you know, it does affect the color of your of your image a bit. So you can go into like hue, saturation, brightness if it ends up looking too saturated and like edit that or make it more saturated or, you know, lighter or darker or what have you. Uh, or curves. Curves, um, I'm not gonna explain curves right now because it can get a little complicated, but um, moving certain parts of it will affect like the lights and the darks of your image. Um, so you can use that to try to alter it and change it and make it be what you want. I usually suggest with starting your image in a magic paper so you don't have to worry about how it's going to look once you put it into a magic paper. Um, so that's that's method one. Let's delete that. Actually, I'll just clear it. All right. The other way, if you do need it to remain editable, this is a little tricky. So basically you select all your layers then you drag them out and then you got to use your other hand to do this you go to gallery you go to the paper you go to the layers and then you drop them in and i do the uh, the pink was set as a background color so i'll just have to like reset that that's not a layer i can transfer over um but yeah the same thing now i have all my layers they're all there ready to go uh and uh 
yeah, that's an easy way to do it. And now I can individually manipulate things. So one thing you might have noticed though is when you do it that way, the blend modes don't transfer over. So I still have to go back. I had these all set to multiply blend mode like the sun was set to multiply blend mode. So unfortunately the blend modes don't move over when you drag layers in that method. So a couple caveats there, but there, easy enough to turn it back on. We had a quick question. Do you know which brush set you plan on using tomorrow? Um, I was thinking about buying some more sets. Oh, tomorrow, hmm. I think I might use gouache paint box again. <laughs> um, I think that's going to be really good for the for what I'm for planning what on doing. Um, so are we going to say what we're drawing tomorrow? Or are we gonna... Yeah, yeah. See, I'm like pre-planned now. Like each day, we'd be like, okay, what are we going to draw today? And then we'd like just do that. But I'm trying to be more planned out uh, now. So um, we're going to be drawing a house. I figure since everybody's home, that would be a cool thing to draw. Is like your house um, and, and you can share that. So so I'm, I drew my house a couple weeks ago, so I'm probably gonna draw like a different house because I already drew my house recently. Um, so I'm just gonna pick a random house maybe and draw it. Uh, but yeah, I think it'd be really cool if you guys drew your houses since we're all spending a lot of time there right now. So you look forward to that tomorrow. I'll send out a reminder on like Instagram and stuff. Um, but same time, 10.30, uh, a.m. Pacific time. I don't know what I'm trying to get up here. First day at home and draw. Sorry, I'm just pulling that up. Um, do we have any other questions? Um, so there was some talk about screen protectors, and we talked about yeah, we talked about, about that at the beginning. A ton, so a ton uh, about you know what to get, what to do. We'll actually do a live probably later on. Uh, maybe next week. Maybe the week after on. I'm going to test protectors. out a, um, like a paper like screen protector and I can do like a whole, um, I can do a live on screen protectors and then I can just share it with you guys whenever you're curious about screen protectors. But um, I talked about it at the beginning of the video and you can find the info on my FAQ of what I like to use. So. Absolutely. Uh, it's almost like, oh, could we learn perspective with the house tomorrow? Um, I probably won't get into perspective. I kind of want to stick to like, taking a photo of a house or thinking of your house and then simplifying it into like an illustration. So we're not going to get too technical with it because we don't have too much time, but um, perspective would be a cool thing to explore. Um, in more like an in-depth. Yeah, in like a more, more in-depth in yeah. video. I do have a tutorial which talks about using the perspective tool of that Procreate has built in, which is on the previous page. It's actually one of the first things Lisa taught me. It was not fun. All perspective? Lady. Yeah, I remember when I was oh. having to do all these perspective exercises. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't like to be a super stickler about perspective in my work, and that's just, again, an artist's choice. Like, I kind of like things to be a little wonky. But this, uh, this, this tutorial shows you how to use um, Procreate's perspective guide to to do like an accurate perspective and even when i do like add in lines to get that accurate perspective then i do it freehand so it still has that kind of freehand element so that's kind of what this is about but you can find that on the tutorials page about perspective anything else um someone did ask how to download and install your free color palettes uh sure i can show you that uh, so i was asking if you're a teacher at some point um, no, Lisa was not a teacher. No. I did. That's when I graduated college. That's what I thought I was gonna do. I I got I double majored in graphic design and photography. I didn't know what I was really gonna do once I graduated. Um, that's not what I was trying to get to. And so I took the C best, which is like the teacher. Um, can you send me the link? I can't. Actually, I can get it off the blog. I got it. I mean. No, no, I can't get it from you. So I took like the test to be like a substitute teacher and I was going to get my credential and stuff. And then I got, um, I, sorry, I'm just scrolling around. And then I got a job at Apple and that kind of like took me on a different course. And then I met Jeff and we started our photography business, which was conducive to the degree that I had photography. And I also got to use all my uh, graphic design skills in running that business. And then it kind of developed into what I'm doing today. Um, so I have this article called How to Use a Color Palette, and this is about how to, uh, 
how to apply the colors from a color palette into your drawing, like by making a little plan and seeing what your dominant color is gonna be and that kind of stuff. So that's not how to import it to Procreate, but that's how to like apply it to your artwork. Um, but at the bottom, there is a library of free color pro or Procreate color palettes. So there's all these different color palettes that you can download. I think there's like 60 or so. So if one piques your interest, you should just be able to tap on it, hit download. This is iOS 13, so it might look different if you have an older iOS. And then it goes into this little downloads thing. And you can tap on that and that'll take you to your downloads folder. And then there's the swatches. And you should just be able to tap it and then it will go into your Procreate palettes library, which is uh, sorry, down here, go to palettes. And I have a lot, so it's, I don't know if it went to the top. I have way, way, I have a lot of palettes. It's in there somewhere. Uh, maybe it's at the bottom or I forget, but it'll be in your palettes. You probably don't have as many palettes as I have because uh, <laughs> I created all those palettes. So I have at least 60 plus all the ones that I make for myself. Um, so yeah, that is how you do it. I would definitely check out that other article so you can see how to use a color palette. Um, because sometimes you get the colors and you're like, okay, well, what, cause what's gonna go where and stuff like that. So yeah, that's a good one to check out. And then uh, someone's asking, can you liquefy all layers at once? Yeah, just select multiple layers and you can liquefy multiple at a time. Okay, awesome. Well, I don't see any other questions showing up. Um, and so, you guys, we're going to be back tomorrow. First of all, that's the really important one. 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time mm -hmm. uh, is what time we will be on. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna be drawing a house, and hopefully you guys can draw your house. That's kind of what I'm hoping happens out of that one. And then on Friday, we've got our Procreate animation class. So you can follow. That, that's more of like a follow along, and we'll all do the same thing um, kind of a thing. So... Should be fun. Again, I'm Lisa Bardo, and my website's Bardo Brush. Um, yeah, it's been really fun doing these with you guys, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Right, everyone. <laughs>